Hi everybody, I am Jared Clark with Air Guns of Arizona. Today we're going to be bringing you another review of a pre-charged gun. We're going to go in depth and cover everything the gun has to offer. And that gun in front is in front of me right now, and it is another gun out of the Caliber line. The one we're going to be looking at today is the Caliber Gun Argus. We're going to look at the two different models that the Argus has within it, the 60 and the 45. We'll highlight all their features. We're going to shoot them at 20 yards. We're going to get shots per fill. We're going to calculate energy, and then we're going to test them at 50 yards for accuracy like we normally do. So I hope you stick around. We will cover the Caliber Gun Argus in its entirety during this review. Okay, another rifle from the Caliber Gun line. If you remember, we've already reviewed the Caliber Gun Cricket 2 Tactical. If you haven't seen that video, we'll put a link somewhere for you there, but be sure and check that one out. But today, we're gonna be looking at the Caliber Gun Argus. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick unboxing for you, exactly as you could expect to get it new from the factory. So this is the owner's manual. It'll be a great resource for you. That's just a hard copy. You get this bag with a drawstring on it. And when you open that, there's a handful of items that you get. The first being a complete reseal kit for the gun. If you go on Caliber Gun's website, they have a schematic, but this is every sealing surface in the rifle. If you need to replace anything, you got all the seals up front there. The second bag here has two magazines, a low spring hammer, and then a uh, fill probe here. So each gun does come with two magazines. We'll cover that at the 20 yards, kind of loading it and how they operate. Um, but you get two up front and then you get the device to fill it and then a different power spring if you want it. All right, so that's the accessories. Here is the main event. This is the Caliber Gun Argus 60. So this one is the full length version, the 60 with the 23 inch barrel. Um, this one is 25 caliber that is here in front of me. In this configuration, it's available in 22, 25, and 30 caliber. So the Argus 60 is available in three calibers. The shorter version, the Argus 45, is available in 177 and 22. So between the two different models, you have four different calibers between the two lengths, um, and power and all of that good stuff will be dictated directly by what length of barrel you have and then what caliber you also have. So this one being the 60, it has that 23 inch Lothar Walther barrel in the 25 and 30 calibers. The 22s do use CZ barrels. So depending on what caliber you have, you might have a different barrel. In my experience, they all shoot good enough that you won't be able to tell which barrel is in it by shooting it. It's a very accurate platform, regardless of Lothar Walther or CZ. So let me get this stuff out of the way. We have the two guns all set up for you. We'll get those in front of us and we'll start highlighting some of the features. Okay, so we have kitted out two of the Arguses here, um, put some scopes. I got an MTC Copperhead 4 to 16 on the 45 here. And then I have the Collis 10 to 50 on the 2560 here. So on the Argus 45 here, you have a um, just shy of an 18 inch barrel. It's 17.7 inches. And then on the 60, you have the 23.6 inch barrel. So that's the biggest difference between the two is the barrel length. Um, but as you can see, this one's scaled back. The, the air cylinder is a little bit smaller on the 45. You're not gonna get quite as much power due to the shorter barrel, but you get a much more compact and maneuverable rifle if you're gonna be carrying it around or if weight or size is important to you, the 45 is a great option. Along with the two different lengths of guns that you see here, there are also two different stock options. Both of these have the wood look stock. Um, Caliber Gun does offer a pure carbon fiber stock as well. So if weight is something of utmost importance to you, the carbon fiber stock is, the entire stock is like three tenths of a pound. It is very impressive. It'll cut off almost half a pound for you in overall weight, um, but it's really just a futuristic, cool, tactical look as well. So you have the wood look that you see in front of us, and then you have the carbon fiber look, which you'll see on the screen now. On the cylinder size, on the 45 with the shorter barrel, you do also have a little bit shorter air cylinder. It's 280 cc's. On the 23.6 inch barrel, you get a 350 cc cylinder on those. Um, both of these cylinders do handle 300 bar, so that's 43 50 on the PSI and that will go a long way for your shot count for your power um, they're incredibly efficient rifles so the regulators can handle that much pressure in front of them and they do a good job as we'll see when we shoot it over the chronograph of regulating the air and doing a really efficient job of what's on board 
It's 30, just, just shy of 33 overall inches. It's 32 and some change. Whereas the Tactical 45 here is about 23 inches in overall length. So this one is really compact for the amount of power you get. Um, and then they both come in weighing, this one weighs about 8.6 pounds. This one's gonna come in just shy of eight pounds on the scale. So you get an idea, they're, they're really robust guns. They're built very well. They use Lothar Walther and CZ, both unchoked barrels, which is, in my opinion, really good because it gives you the ability to shoot a lot of different projectiles. Slugs right out of the box will shoot a little bit better out of these unchoked barrels. Um, you can play with different projectiles, but in my opinion, nothing is shot poorly. It's just more about what's shooting the best with the guns. So caliber guns, Argus is here in front of us. You got the full length and you got the compact. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna focus on the full length and we're gonna highlight all the features. Everything more or less is interchangeable except for the items we just covered, the barrel, the cylinder. But feature wise, we're gonna scope in on this one here and we're gonna go front to back and see what it has to offer. So here is the caliber gun Argus 60. This is the one that we're gonna be highlighting everything. So I'm gonna start in the back. We're gonna work our way forward. Hopefully we cover everything quickly and efficiently for you. If you see anything we missed, leave it in the comments and we'll be sure and update it next time. <laughs> so at the back here, you have a rubberized butt stock for you. This one just gives you some nice texture. It's a good anchor point for a gun like this when it's on a bipod here. I don't even have to hold it. Just the friction alone is enough to really move it. So it gives you an idea. Your shoulder can dictate quite a bit there. I'm gonna spin this around for you. Directly on the back here, you can see that little red needle there. That is a cocking indicator, so for the sake of So now I cocked the gun, it pops out like a little turkey timer. So when you're sitting behind the gun and you don't know if you've loaded another round, you're not 100% sure, that's a quick reference for you. That's kind of right in your face. So you're just gonna go, oh, yep, it's either cocked or when it's fired, it sits flush behind there. So, so this is the magazine we're looking at here. So we're gonna pull the mag out. It has this little arm that sticks out on the side of the magazine. That's a lock. So if I push, if I compress that, I cannot turn the internal drum here. What it gives you the ability to do is if you only wanna fire one shot or you only, know you only need one more shot, you can fire it and then you can, every time you move this, nothing internally is rotating. So it won't double load. If you've ever been in that position where you throw it back and you're like, oh crap, if I push it forward, is the second one gonna go in the chamber? That's where you lock this, then you throw it back and you can clear it. So it's neat. It's definitely something I don't use often having tested it, but I can see the importance and I can see the value of it. It is a cool little feature that's unique to the Argus and the magazine type that it uses. So going forward here, this is our cylinder. We're hitting kind of where the breech block meets the cylinder. Um, we said on the 60 here, it is a 350 cc cylinder. And then in that cylinder is where the internal regulator sits. So you have 350 cc's, you have your regulator, and then your plenum space, the area behind the regulator, that is 40 cc's. So that helps get power. That helps get a good shot count, um, but all in that cylinder there, you have 350 cc's of available air and 40 cc's behind the regulator. So good amount of air, good amount of shot count as we'll see at 20 yards. The very end of the cylinder, it does have a manual uh, gauge here. It, it, it's listed in bar and it's also color coded. So all the way up to 300 bar, it goes from blue, green to yellow. You don't wanna go into the red, um, not in terms of catastrophic failure, just in terms of performance. Your regulator can't operate and flow and function like it does if you go above 300 bar. So good quick reference there. It, there's also this spring-loaded cap here. And when you pull on it, it, it reveals this little circle here at the very end. That's where the fill probe goes. So you put the fill probe in, the two O-rings on it will seal it inside of there. And then you fill this to the desired 300 bar fill pressure. Quick note on that, it has a slow fill system as well. So when you when you first fill it, you'll open you'll open up your tank and the gun needle will move very slowly. It, it does that to keep the air from going in too hot and giving you a more precise reading. Um, but just be warned if you're filling it for the first time or you, you just got the gun and you're excited but you don't think it's taking air, give it a minute, give it maybe two minutes. It will take the air, it's just an incredibly slow process. All right, so there's the cylinder. Um, I guess we'll go back here. The, wall, the wood stock here comes on all the Arguses. It's a one piece stock here. I like it. It's got the thumb hole cup. It's very comfortable. And then you have this little window here, which I'm assuming was just to cut back on some of the weight, but it gives it a good look and design. So it's, it's a tactical rifle, definitely. And the fact that it's a bullpup design, um, 
and it's all metal and wood as you can see, but it's kind of got that traditional, much more traditional feel than just an AR style pistol grip or something like that. It gives you a much more comfortable ergonomic gun in my opinion. Um, so it kind of blends the line between tactical and traditional. You have a really comfortable stock on a very tactical frame. Next, and probably the first thing most of you saw when I pulled it out of the box is this nice square shroud right here. You don't see very many, if any, I'm trying to think. I, I can't think of any others right off the top of my head that go away from the cylindrical circle gold design that's so common and prevalent in pre-charge guns. So they did this just to be different, I think. It definitely gives the shroud more volume for moderation. Um, so it's a nice and relatively quiet for what it's producing. But the main thing I think is the visual appeal. And I, I'm a sucker, I like it. I think it looks, anything that's unique is right up my alley. So I think they did a good job there. It would've been a lot easier just to do a cylindrical shroud and it would look a lot like the Cricut too, but they went against the grain. They did a, a square mod here, and I think it looks good. Like I said, it kind of blends the tactical and the classic and the future and the past. It's it's a cool it's a cool looking setup at the end of the day, in my opinion. And it's definitely unique. You won't have one that looks like everyone else's. Inside of that square shroud is the barrel. On this one, it's 23.6 uh, inch Lothar Walther barrel. If you do the 30 cal, you'll have the same barrel. Um, in the 22, it will be a CZ unchoked barrel. So underneath, they all come with match grade barrels as the accuracy tests are gonna prove that. Um, but 2530 will be Lothar Walther, 17722 will be CZ barrels. They do come with a Weaver style scope rail here. So it's very interchangeable with a lot of things on the market, um, but that's not the only one you get. You have another one up underneath the gun here. Um, I went ahead and clamped on our AccuTac bipod to it, but you have a scope rail up top and then you have an accessory weaver rail up underneath the gun. So two points of contact. I have a scope and a bipod. You can go with whatever you want on those. In the back here, you have the um, wood cheek piece. Um, you're not resting your cheek on the cold metal surface of the gun itself, which sometimes is the case on, on bullpup. So, but they thought ahead, they put this nice cheek piece here. Again, blending the tactical and the traditional, it's a, it's a very comfortable setup to shoot. All right, the cocking arm itself here. This is a side lever. Um, it's effortless, it comes back and clicks, you could do it with one finger. This one on the Argus is ambidextrous. It can be flipped and it is an incredibly simple process. You take out that screw, you take out that screw and you take this out just because it flips and has to be inverted. Um, and the whole thing pulls off. On this side here, you can see there's a window that accepts it. So you remove this window, you put the window on this side. It's about six screws on and off. It's very simple. If I can handle it, I guarantee you, everyone out there watching it can handle it too. So a simple process. Um, as a right-handed shooter, in all honesty, I usually, personal guns, I switch them to the left-handed side because I like this. I can maintain line of sight and actuate the gun. My trigger finger will never leave if I run it on this side. So it gives you the option as the shooter to decide what you want and switch it in a matter of minutes. At the end of the shroud, um, you do have some threading in here, or there are baffles in between the barrel and the end of the shroud. Um, so adapters are available if you wanted to quiet it down further. Like I said, it is relatively quiet for the amount of noise it makes, but there are adapters and add-on pieces if you wanna go further and make it as quiet as you need it to be. You have the trigger linkage system here. So here's your physical trigger blade. It's actuating back here is where it's actually making the contact and working on, but they do a good job with the linkage. It's not heavy. It doesn't have much creep at all. Um, and you really can't tell that it's running the whole length of the gun. It's a very crisp, two-stage feeling trigger. So they do a good job with that. And then right on top of the trigger, you have a paddle style safety here when you can see red. So right now we're in fire, now we're in safe. So when it's completely flat, you're safe, point it down to be in fire. And that can pretty easily be actuated by your trigger finger. So it's very ergonomic in how it works. Every caliber gun does come with a one-year warranty. So for the first year of ownership, if you have any problems that are manufacturer defects, call AOA and you will be fully covered. There's a lot to take in in a short amount of time, but hopefully we covered everything for you that you could have a question about. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some air in it. We're gonna go to 20 yards. We're gonna shoot shot count. We're gonna see what kind of accuracy at 20 yards we have. After that, we'll go to 50 and try and hold the group together there. Meet you back here, put a bow on this one. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. Stick around.
We have the Argus 60 in 25 caliber here at our 20 yard range. Um, we're gonna do a uh, rough indication of accuracy with it at 20 yards. We're gonna calculate how many shots it gets per 300 bar fill, and then we'll crunch some numbers and see what kind of power we're looking at with each caliber Argus that is available. Um, so first, what we're gonna do is show you how to load the mag, then we'll group it at 20 yards, and then we'll get some shot count. So let's go ahead and load the mag. So to load the Argus magazine, um, it's a very simple process. Everything is self-contained right here. So you just, you put one pellet in and you rotate it to the next. So you just kind of hold it there with your thumb and index it to the next one. So you do this 12 times. And when you hit the 12th one, the tension from all the pellets will keep the spring loaded and keep it actuating. All right, and that's the last one, number 12. Now everything is held in and as the probe comes it through it, it'll cycle it to the next pellet. So we have 12 King Heavy Mark IIs loaded in our magazine there. Um, it's all nice and tight like we saw. So let's go ahead and put it in the gun and we're gonna see what kind of group at 20 yards we can hold together with this 25 caliber. Okay, so that is the entire magazine of the King Heavy Mark IIs. It's just wearing out the center of the target, so it gives me a good indication that accuracy is good and repeatable here at 20 yards. Um, so happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead and recharge it, and we're gonna calculate how many shots we get out of this 25 caliber Argus 60. So we have a fresh 300 bar fill in the gun. What we're gonna try and do now is calculate how many shots we can get per 300 bar fill on the 2560 Argus here. Okay, so we were shooting 33.9 grainers. Um, I got 45 shots per fill with an average of 904 feet per second. So if you crunch that number, it comes out to just north of 60. I don't think it's all the quite way to 61, but it's like 60.6 foot pounds of energy. It's doing everything you'd want out of a 25 caliber. So good amount of shots, 45 shots per fill, four magazines, give or take, off of one 300 bar fill. Extreme spread on that was 14 feet per second. So the regulator is working very consistently. And my standard deviation, the average velocity difference between every shot is four feet per second. So with the 25 caliber 60 Argus, we shot 45 shots right at 60 foot pounds. If you were to go with the 22 caliber in this exact same setup, you could take, you could expect about 60 shots at 40 foot pounds. Here in the 25, we got 45 shots at 60 foot pounds. And then in 30 caliber, you're probably gonna get about 20 shots at 90 to 92 foot pounds of energy. So lots of energy, decent shot count that, that ties to it. If you're more interested in the shorter caliber Argus, you can get about 60 shots at 20 foot pounds in 177, or you can get about 50 shots at 35-ish foot pounds in 22. So regardless of which setup you go with, it will be a good shot count and it'll have relatively high power for the barrel that's inside of it. So that gives us a good idea here at 20. Let's take it outside to the 50 yard range. We'll see what kind of group we can hold together. And then I'll meet you back into the showroom and we'll tie this one all up. Here's the caliber gun Argus 60. This one is the 25 caliber with the long 23 and a half inch barrel. Um, we were seeing that it was doing about 900 feet per second with the King Heavies back at 20 yards here. So I've loaded five of these 33 nines into the magazine. We're gonna see at that velocity what they can do at 50 yards. So we'll get a five shot group, see what kind of accuracy you can expect out of 50 yards with the caliber gun Argus 60 here. Okay, so that's five out of the magazine, 33.9s. Let's get down there and take a closer look at it. Here we are closer at 50. This was five shots coming out of the magazine with the 33.9s. That is right at a half an inch, maybe a little bit bigger. That's my one inch coin for scale. So nice and tight. I didn't do the best job of zeroing it on my target here, but the group size is what we're looking for here. So I held the same point, got that nice tight group, completely covers it up with the one inch coin. And that's good repeatability out of a magazine system. So 60 foot pounds, that kind of accuracy, this gun could do anything you wanted it to with a pre-charged rifle. It is a really multi-platform weapon and this kind of accuracy and power really proves that.
Okay, so there it is, another pre-charged gun review. We did the Caliber Gun Argus series today, and I was thrilled with how the Argus shot. I, I'm a big fan of how they look. Um, you get a lot of power in a small package. Like we saw on the range, you were getting 36 foot pounds and 50 shots per fill out of the small guy, or you could jump it up, get 60 foot pounds and about 55 shots per fill out of the big guy here. So everything you could ever want in power and accuracy and build quality, sometimes less is more on a gun. And the Argus here, I think has proven that to us today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are interested in trying an Argus, call Air Guns of Arizona, they can get you set up. If you're interested in seeing more reviews like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, join us on, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Facebook, join our email letter, do whatever you can to follow Air Guns of Arizona and we'd very much appreciate that. I hope you enjoyed this review and I hope you come back for the next one. Thanks guys. Thank you.